Surfaces, sizzling, swelling, sections, dots, dodging, direct deposition, and salt scent sailing. All this and more. Print Fix Friday, episode 179. The cat's in this one, at least for a little bit. Let's get into it. First up, any idea why I get these patterns on my prints? It's an Ender 3 V3 SE. It says the printer is the Ender 3. They're using Elegoo PLA and the issue reduced slightly at lower print speeds, but is still present, just not as obvious. And the top comment has it perfect. It's ringing. The V3 SE is not, to my understanding, a clipperized version of the Ender 3, which means it doesn't run input shaper. So unfortunately, things like this are going to be common on machines without that technology. The only real way to look at getting rid of it is to adjust your print speeds and adjust your accelerations to try to counteract that ringing. The ringing occurs because of a little bit of extra slop in that gantry. And as the machine is changing directions, and in this particular case, as it's coming off of the edge of this print and then going across the print, it runs into resonance or it's actually shaking. This is a very common problem, even on high speed printers. And we tend to call that more of the VFA or the very fine artifact, but in printers without input shaper or the ability to use input shaper, it's ringing. And uh, there's not very good ways to get rid of it. You can isolate your machine on things like foam blocks, concrete pavers or combination of the two if you want to get rid of sound going out of the machine and adding mass to the machine itself. The other option, of course, is to really work at tuning those profiles, but it will vary based on each kind of object. You can see it's way worse on this hexagon versus uh, this printed hole with the point at the top to keep it from sagging. So it really does depend. It also can vary quite a bit on different materials, different temperatures, heck, different ambient temperatures because machines will expand and contract. While it's not a ton, it does all still play a factor. And that's why machines like Bamboos will run input shaper calibrations before every single print, because technically it's a little bit different every single time. Best things to do, slow the speed way down. If you can't slow the speed way down, play around with different speeds, like plus or minus a couple of percent. And the same with your accelerations, because the accelerations are probably going to affect this more often than not. It's not a clipper machine. It's not using input shaping. So unfortunately by the current standards of today, it's a little bit of an older machine, but it still does check out as a functional 3D printer. While it's unlikely to make the best quality 3D prints on the planet, it will still make plenty strong parts that will absolutely get the job done and that is nothing a even light coat of filler primer and quick sanding would not take care of. The Ender 3 series is getting an update with the brand new Creality High series, but I am very interested in that new K2 Plus. If you guys do have that or you're looking at that new Creality High series, love to know in those comments down below. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. And my name's Grant. This is Victoria, a seldom seen member of the 3D Musketeers team. And this is Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose by taking over 15 years of industry experience and applying it to pretty much anything here in the 3D printing industry. And if you have any trouble with your 3D printer, we're here to help. You can reach out to us on all the social medias or make a YouTube video and tag us in it so that we get notified of it. We love helping people. Up next, surface finish changes on part significantly. Try two different PETGs, the Acididi. Sure, Acid. that's a rough name these days and Elegoo. This is a new symptom since swapping to a 0.6 nozzle. PLA prints fine, and they printed fine with a 0.4. Calibrations and Orca Slicer were performed. Filament was dried for 12 hours at 65C. It seems to get odd surface texture when I get to the thinner part. In general, the texture seems inconsistent. My only guess so far is crap filament. Any ideas? Two different ones here. I know I say it's not wet filament. I know I say that all the time. This one is actually indicative of wet filament. But the filament's been dried. Does 12 hours get deep into the filament far enough more than a couple of wraps deep? I don't know. It's actually not something that I've ever tested and I'm not entirely certain how to test it. If you know, 
I'd love to know, because it would be interesting to see how long it takes to actually dry an entire spool all the way to the core of it and not just kind of the outside skin of that spool. But when you're getting to thinner areas like this and you are running higher temps, which you do on machines like the X1 Carbon, where you could print a lot faster, your minimum layer time starts to become an issue here. And if you're not giving the material enough time to actually cool down and you're printing too fast, you can get bubbles from time to time. Although this is likely more indicative of chamber temperatures getting too high and ending up with the actual filament itself expanding in the heat break and getting clogged. The bamboo has a really robust extruder that can often push through most clogs and that's somewhat what I see here, but it does also really look like wet filament. I know I say it's not wet filament, but we can see indications of it being damp down here. It looks like Rice Krispie treats. And the stringing here is indicative of damp PETG. This, though, is really damp. You might even say it's moist. And even living in the swamp of Florida, our PETG stays relatively dry for at least a couple of weeks before we have to put it through a pretty serious drying cycle. If you are experiencing this and you do believe it is related to wet filament, print directly out of a dryer. The X1 Carbon has the ability to do this. You can feed the filament right through the back. Although personally, we have a Y fitting installed so that we can run filament directly out of a dryer or run it out of the AMS. In my experience, the AMS is not really a dryer. It doesn't actually dry anything. And the little bags of desiccant ended up leaking on my X1 Carbon because it's so damp here because humidity and oh my gosh. Oh my god. For reference, if you saw our deep dive into the core one that we filmed in Prague, you noticed there was some B-roll in there that was all black. The background was all black. I filmed that here in Florida, outside at 11 o'clock at night, and it was so damp that the printer itself started to condensate, and I had to stop filming because of that. If you actually want to see the entire process of filming that B-roll, you got to join via channel member or... Patreon or PayPal, which you can do for as little as $1 a month or the $10 tier and how you get to come hang out in our private Discord server. If you had filament outside in that kind of weather, it would absolutely get wet, but not necessarily for a part this small. My guess is that the filament itself was still pretty damp. It's likely being overheated. It's likely not being cooled enough and potentially it is just expanding in the heat break. The easiest thing to do since you have a dryer is to print directly out of that dryer and verify whether or not things actually work. If it works better when you're printing directly out of the dryer, then hey, it's wet filament, dryer material for longer. We highly recommend the resealable sous vide style bags and the USB powered pumps to vacuum everything down. But even in a really, really high humidity environment, that's not gonna save your filament. The best thing you can do is if you're not sure, dry it. As long as you're not overheating it during the drying process, it's not going to hurt the material and often only helps. Big two things here, could be heat creep, could be wet filament. Wet filament is the easiest one to deal with, but if you do believe it's heat creep, check to make sure what the chamber of that printer is at while it is printing those areas. If it is above like 45 or 50 C, it could actually be heat creep, especially with the rapid PETG from Elegoo. I know at least for the Elegoo rapid PETG, it likes to print a lot colder than other PETGs that we've used in the past. So could be something to mention there as well. Small holes slash pockmarks. What could this be? PLA on a bamboo A1. This one's pretty simple. This is your retractions. Decent photo. Thankfully, I can almost see your full fingerprints in that. We've got the little zits and pock marks. This is likely because their Z seam is set to random. It appears that it is happening once per layer, which would line up with the Z seam set to random. The best thing to do on machines like this is to set them as aligned and maybe paint it into a corner. You can look at doing the scarf joints or the scarf seams, however you want to call it. That can help reduce this, although it does add a little bit for your printing time. We did a video on this a while back. We'll card to it so you can take a look. Traditionally, the scarf seams do help a ton in getting rid of those little holes and pock marks. Ultimately though, it is just a cosmetic thing and does not indicate that your part is somewhat weaker for whatever reason. Next up from Omaha 3D Prints in our Patreon Discord, who has been having some fun respooling their filament. 
and decided to try to dry some ASA and forgot that their re-spooled filament was on a printed spool that was printed out of PLA. Thankfully, you can just use one of the Prusa spool holders where it doesn't really care how wonky the outside is as long as the inside's okay and it will still run the filament. But it is a big thing to keep in mind that if you are going to re-spool your filament and it is a filament that needs to be dried, make sure the spool material is as temperature resistant, if not more temperature resistant than the actual material that you're printing with, because otherwise you will run into a problem like this. There are people that make ejection molded spools that will you know, lock and unlock. Bamboo makes their own spools for this if you wanted to just use theirs instead. And there are some ones on Kickstarter, like the Dry AF from Greg the Maker, community member, so I don't mind, you know, pimping it just a little bit. But of course, remember, Kickstarter, there's no guarantee. Only, you know, spend what money you are willing to risk on this. But I do think this is a really, really nice concept where, yeah, this kind of thing happens all the time and throwing out spools or where they break apart and you end up with this big bit of spaghetti, especially if you do it on purpose, Ellie. <laughs> you know, having something that's made out of metal is really nice, and I'm guessing that's just some sort of smooth rod. Very, very nice spool design, in my opinion. And while they are a little bit expensive, 31 of the greatest of British pounds. You can certainly get multiples and do it for a lot less. This is the fun problem of doing manufacturing yourself or doing it on a small scale. We'll link to it in that description if you do want to go ahead and support it, but there are plenty of other spool designs out there that you could use, but again, it's got to be high temp rated. I do like the metal ones, though. Those are super cool. I'd love to know what you do for refill spools or master spools, or do you not even bother with any of that? I know a lot of companies that switch to cardboard are now switching back to plastic because the cardboard ends up getting absolutely obliterated in shipping and the plastic is, well, it's just stronger. What causes these rough walls? It's on a brand new P1S, maybe five hours of print time, brand new roll of Polyterra right out of the bag. I live in a 20% relative humidity dry climate. Boy, that is dry compared to here. I did manual calibration Orca, both right angle and line, and applied a very slight K factor that is the material. All other settings are stock except fuzzy skin of point. 0, 07. This looks like over extrusion, but wouldn't the material flow calibration handle this? And well, because this one is a little bit older, we can see the individual did figure out their issue. It was the seam set to random. That can allow for a little bit of filament to kind of extrude out, if you will, from back pressure as the machine is moving around to do those random seams. So aligned seams often help. But fuzzy skin will also have some impact on this. So be careful with the fuzzy skin. Last but not least, I know I effed up. Print instructions said to put salt mid-print to add weight. Me not thinking twice about it until the fans turned on and I had Mariah Carey singing All I Want for Christmas in there. There is salt everywhere. How do you recommend I proceed with cleaning up? This is a tough one. Salt is very, very problematic for electronics. It's very problematic for anything made of steel, especially in a high humidity environment. You're going to have to be very careful to vacuum all of this up. I highly recommend if you're going to vacuum this up to make sure that you ground out the vacuum as well, ground out the printer as well, so that nothing is building up an excess of static charge that could really hurt machines like this. Be very careful if you're going to be adding weight to stuff. One, don't use salt, right? You can't really use sand either. I would recommend something like steel BBs or lead BBs. Just you know, be careful with lead, obviously. Use something that's got more mass to it than salt. I mean, I know that salt's really cheap, but steel BBs have always been my preference. And we always pour in some epoxy to keep everything from turning into a maraca. But if you are trying to add weight to something, you could easily design the part to print in such a way that there aren't any bottom layers on this. You then peel the part up, flip it over, pour whatever you want into it, and then glue on a bottom plate and you're done. You don't have to go through this potential problem. And this is not the first time that we've seen this happen, even on Printfix Friday, let alone period. But you do have to be very careful when you're using machines with really high performance fans because stuff like this starts to become a bit of a problem. You do want to be careful with salt though, because it can short out electrical components. So please make sure that you are very thorough in your cleaning. It will also obviously rust anything if you get moisture on it. So let this be a bit of a lesson that it could have been a much more expensive white powder. 
but at least this one has a decent, I don't know, enclosure for the printer. So it's unlikely that too much salt got around any electronics, but hey, better safe than sorry. Ground out everything, vacuum and clean it up, and then give the printer a really good deep cleaning because you definitely don't want little bits of salt left over and salt water can leave sticky like traces behind if you don't fully clean it up. Highly recommend to mix alcohol with a little bit of water just to make it so it doesn't evaporate as quickly to help get all that salt out of there, the little bits and pieces that are left over. And that alcohol will naturally just flash off on its own. So you don't have to worry too much about leaving water and salt behind. We can see here they're saying that I think the adrenaline of printing something at 7 a.m. mixed with fatigue that clouded my judgment. I had a pound of metal BBs next to the printer for this exact purpose, yet I went downstairs to get the salt. Oh no. Yeah, F's in the chat for that one. I know they're not the first and I know they won't be the last to do it. So I'd love to know, have you ever done that before? And what is your preferred way to add weights to prints? Us personally, if it's not the metal BBs, we like to add an actual like area in the bottom of the print where we can install like a slug of steel or a slug of lead and then i'll get some sticky back felt to put over it so it holds it in place and then it also keeps it from damaging whatever services that you put things on love to know y'all's thoughts down in those comments and if you do want to support the efforts that we do here on the channel get your name listed right next to me and this lovely cat at the five dollar tier and higher you can do so by clicking those links in that description and joining and at the $10 tier and higher you get to come hang out in our private discord server where you get access to a lot of behind the scenes content you get to see these videos early when we review them and so so much more and if you do like this kind of content you can click right below me for the entire print fix friday series and next to that for our deep dive into the prusa core one at prusa research that is all we have for you all today stay safe out there don't forget to call your loved ones and as always keep making awesome have a good one i'm getting ready to start filming and somebody decided to come and join me and so we thought that we would say hello so if you watch all the way to the end of the video you get the cat I have the rare occurrence where she's in here voluntarily so I might as well show you it's victoria this is her too what is it hmm i know the whole internet loves you they really do you're rubbing your face against hot ends Every time. No, go back into your bed, please. God damn it. You're, you're not allowed to just sit on my keyboard. There are plenty of allowable cat activities, and sitting on my keyboard is not one of them.